firstly, I want to thank all my subscribers. I'm really glad that you feel that I could possibly show you some things, help you get around Unity and start your own journey in programming. But I have noticed a trend. Um, there's actually not many people watching this series, um, and at the same rate, the old Slender videos are being watched exponentially. I don't think these people realize that this is still essentially a Slender Guide. If you look at my notes even, the title is Slender Guide version 2. So I'm not sure with the lack of popularity on this series if I'm going to keep continuing to make videos, but to all my subscribers I will finish off this series. Okay, so let's get on with it. So what are we going to do here? Well, in my notes I've added range detection. I'm already one step ahead of myself. So in this episode, we're going to be changing to our state machine, to our finite state machine, to our engine. So let's get into it. Open up our MPC script. Now to start off with, we need to think about what kind of states this MPC is going to have. So for this character, because it was going to be the Slender Man, I'm going to have him to chase you in range, of course. And I'm just going to show how we can use this NPC in the opposite way. So we're going to have an idle state. We're going to have a free roaming state. Then I'm going to have an option to go two other ways if the NPC is in range. I'm going to have a chasing. And then I'm going to have a running away. So let's create a variable to store our enum value. Semicolon. Okay, so there's the enums of all our states. This scene looks different. All I've done is added two walls and moved the camera back. You can see it's exactly the same as where we left off. Where the enemy is seeing the obstacles, casting rays, and finding his way around those obstacles. That's all that's changed there. Okay, so on our NPC script with that variable we've added, we now see we have our states. So let's build the functions for that. We'll be switch case. And we're going to be switching based on the condition in our state. and a case for each one of our states. Currently our moving is set up to be chasing. Now if we had a running away state we would still be moving, so we would still be doing all these calculations, but what would be the thing that changes? This would be our look direction. So what I'm going to show you now is how to pass a variable into a function. So while we're chasing, of course, we're going to be using this equation which finds a target position in relation to us and then sets our look direction vector to face towards that. So to make it running away we could simply swap these two values around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on the function. When you pass a variable to a function you can declare it inside the brackets here. 
So now, look direction is going to be passed to the movie. And that is of type vector 3. So now our moving function will still use our look direction variable. It's not declared here anymore. It's declared when the function is called. So that's commented out. Okay, so how do we pass a variable to the function? Well, first we call the function like normal. So we would still call moving, but we have to give it its look direction. So in the case of chasing, we've already calculated it here. So we simply pass that value to the function. Now let's see if we can see this in action. I'll do that in the inspector. You see now we have a state engine. By default the state is set to idle. What we can do is hit play and simply change this to chasing. And there we see the behavior is exactly the same. The function is working exactly as it was before. That look direction is being calculated previously and passed to the moving function. So let's add in the functionality of running away. Again, we start with calling the function. And what information do we pass to that function? Like I said, if this directional vector is calculating a direction towards our target, then we simply sw swap these around be going away. So this time it'll be my transform position minus the target position. And again, we just want to use a normalized vector for our direction. Now let's test that out. Back on the MPC just so I can change the state. So we hit play. We come to chasing. Now if I switch it to running away. There he goes. Now he doesn't want to be anywhere near the, the target. So that's simply using the same function. But sending different values to that function for all the same calculations that it will use after that.